Just a few hours from the August 8th general election, we're taking a look at the state of the race. And in studio with me for this conversation, political analysts Dismas Mukua, Hezbon Owila, and Mutinda Kavemba. Now, gentlemen, before we went on break, we're delving into the IEBC preparedness ahead of the election. And as it is, um, IEBC has now said it will not invalidate unstamped ballot papers during the counting of votes in the upcoming general election. And this, of course, invalidates an earlier decision to invalidate correctly marked ballot papers but those that did not have IABC's seal. Now, the decision for this, according to Ezra Chiloba, is to prevent uh, the commission from punishing voters for mistakes that were committed by the commission. So first of all, there is um, you know, an admission of uh, a mistake that was committed by IABC. But let me begin with you, Owila, in terms of this decision and the spanner it, thro it throws into the works in terms of transparent, credible elections. I think the biggest question here is uh, why are we expecting IBC officials to make mistakes in the mm -hmm. first place? I mean, uh, we should not even be in a situation where we are punishing people for the mistakes by these officials. I think they are paid well, they are recruited, they are trained, uh, and, and, and you know, even 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 the the advert that IBC had out, you know, for trainers of trainers. I think uh, the the whole thing is is is. is probably raising more questions that, that, that meets uh, the eye. Because uh, if, if you're going to make mistakes, you know, and you know that there are likely to be mistakes, why don't you deal with the mistakes that you're going to make rather than give us a double-edged sword? Because when you talk about uh, not invalidating any, any, any ballot paper that is not stamped, mm -hmm. what are you telling anyone who is out to cause some mischief? You're actually telling them that, you know, it doesn't matter whether they succeed in getting those uh, uh, you know, uh, the stamp that will validate this or not, the fact that they can get ballot papers into the ballot boxes would make those ballot papers count, which is unfortunate, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, on the other hand, you'd want to ask yourself, uh, is it uh, something that works to help the voter? Yes, because uh, you realize that uh, there's, there's been a lot going on telling people that make sure that your stamp is, your ballot paper is stamped, right. you know. So if, if the audience, uh, if the voters themselves realize that, you know what, we also have a responsibility in ensuring that our ballot papers are stamped, I think the onus is on IBC just to ensure that they do their part rather than open uh, a leeway that may cut whichever side. Right. Um, Kavemba, do you think it's a move in good faith? Because um, there's, of course, fears of vote rigging using imitated ballot papers. But IBC has said uh, they will have special security features, even on the unstamped ballot papers, to make sure that that does not happen. At least they've addressed that. But you, you need to also look at the flip side. There's a reason why Chiloba is doing this. Uh -huh. Because I actually was thinking about it. And uh, like Willa is correctly saying, there has been a lot of messaging trying to remind people to ensure that their ballots are stamped. Right. Because if they are not, it's going to be invalidated. So I was asking myself, supposing someone just wants to cause some mischief, and uh, they, they make sure that at least a certain number is not stamped, stamped. in certain strongholds, uh -huh. that can also really be used to also, again, uh, play games with the, with the resort. Uh -huh. Because you, you can imagine a, a, a polling station having, le, le, let's say, just even an average of even three. Uh -huh. And uh, you know there are very many. You can imagine there are 40,000. That would translate into three ballots from the strongholds. That, and it is deliberate, of course, so that the, the number is so small that it will look like it's an acceptable margin. But they margin. said there's security features. That, no, that's why I'm saying that has already been addressed. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm talking about if... Chiloba had not gone the way he is gone. Right. That's what I'm trying to right. address. Mm -hmm. S such that, if you know, initially that would have meant that any ballot that is not stamped is invalid. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. That also gives room for playing games, right. especially from the staff of the IBC. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying that even an average of two unstamped from strongholds where the probability that they would have gone to a certain side is so clear, that can also be used to... To, to play games around the, uh, the outcome of the result. Yeah. So I, I, I think now that he has explained that there are special features, that has already taken care of. And again, we also have to ask, to ask uh, where is the law? Uh -huh. Because I think when he was issuing this statement, he said that they, they noticed that among the amendments that were done, was the removal of that provision that every ballot has to be stamped. stamped. Because I do not think they have the leeway to do this when the law is very express on the matter. But when they realized that is when now they brought out this circular uh -huh. and informed people that uh, besides stamping, there are other features. So whatever concerns you might have about 
other ballots that are not genuine being brought in have been addressed by the, by the features. And uh, again, it's correct that the vote has nothing to do with stamping of the ballot. ballot. Papers, so invalidating right. that ballot on the basis of something that they had nothing to do with, again, is, so it, 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 it's also about trust as Kenyans, because both points are valid if you look at uh -huh, them. Uh -huh. So the question is, what safeguards then do we have to ensure that whatever loopholes that have been created by this new provision are not abused? Right. Um, and Let me just say, right. uh, you know, if, if you look at the issue just before that, uh, there is an additional like one million voters that have been printed, and I want to ballot papers that have been printed, and I want to believe that they share the same same features, mm -hmm. and I think that is where the the, the, the crux of the matter is, that if you have uh, all these ballot <coughs> papers with the same security features, you know, then how do you mitigate against ballot papers that came in and they were not stamped? Right. And I think IBC is is should be well informed to address that. Uh, Moko, what did you make of this situation? Are we opening up more loopholes in the election? Well, I was. I, I think uh, what Chiloba is doing is actually shifting the burden to right at his office. Mm -hmm. Because it's not the duty of a voter when you go to the polling station, you're given your ballot papers, and then you start asking the returning officer, the presiding officer, that uh, please advise me on the security features on this ballot paper, or let me establish where the stamp is to establish whether this ballot is actually valid. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. As a voter, you walk to the polling station, you get your ballots, you cast your votes, you, you go home. Right. As a voter, you are not supposed to take responsibility over the maybe some uh, errors or, or acts of omission mm -hmm. or commission by the officers. Let that stop in their dockets. And if there's any mischief intended by the commissioners, then the commission takes a responsibility. So it's up to them to make sure that their house is in order. And for me as a voter, I don't want to be penalized because I've woken up early in the morning, I'm going to spend hours on end in the queue, and then uh, I, I mark my ballots, and then eventually my vote doesn't count because some of the commission was uh, lazy or was uh, mischievous. And as Kavemba has indicated, there is room for, uh, for mischief and playing around with votes. But it's important for us to really appreciate the fact that IBC has actually gone the extra mile in trying to create those uh, predictable systems. <coughs> but on the same note, as a voter, you have to be very vigilant. You have to be, you know, you have to open your eyes because this election is uh, almost a matter of uh, life and death in Kenya, but the principal responsibility stops with Chiloba, and it's important that he's actually accepted liability very early on in the day. You remember uh, the last time when we had the presidential petition at the Supreme Court, this was a very contentious, contentious issue because people did not know where it stands. But now that it's been cleared, and uh, I can bet my head there are going to be so many petitions after this election, then the lawyers will be well advised on how to craft their petitions. And for me, I think it's a step in the right direction. Right, right. Uh, and of course, um, as, as we head to the election yesterday, we saw uh, the two different uh, parties, Anase and Jubilee, hold their final <clears throat> rallies uh, in terms of just getting Kenyans to come out and vote. And that was a clarion call in this past week. Um, both parties, can you tell the Kenyans, please come out and vote to ensure we win in the first round. And that is also um, tied with issues of confidence in terms of uh, the entire electoral process, in terms of the IBC um, process. There's been contention with regard to the manner in which election results are going to be transmitted. Now, as we speak, IBC has mapped out 11,000 polling stations out of the 40,000 and polling stations that do not have access to um, 2G connectivity, 3G connectivity, or 4G connectivity, um, which means they will have to wait a bit longer in terms of the receiving, uh, receiving the results. But this is IBC doing this, they say, in terms of cementing confidence. So those areas do not feel uh, that there is no transparency in the transmission of the res these results. Once again, um, Kavemba, in terms of IBC trying to ensure that Kenyans have confidence in them in this election, was this a right move? Yeah, let me, let me, I want to believe that they have uh, a basis for having mapped out those counties. And uh, these counties also, they are Kenyans who are there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Kenyans can also tell whether some of these uh, uh, 4G, areas 3G, have uh, uh, yes. And uh, it would be wrong for any of the areas that uh, are sufficient network to be among those, because again, it would start raising suspicion. Why are you saying we don't have this mm -hmm. yet on our day to day? activities we are normally have in this kind of service. So I'm hoping that uh, their, their technical team has been very thorough mm -hmm. to fast because we do not want anything that casts doubt on them. Their, their process of confidence building has been taken long and uh, they, are, they are almost getting there because if you, if, you, if you notice now the issue has not been IBC of late and uh, the issue has now been uh, about the other state agencies, mm -hmm. the, the, the security apparatus especially. Uh, that means that uh, the level of uh, 
confidence that the IBC has built has gotten to a point that uh, it is no longer viable to make them, uh, you know, to always keep attacking them. Right. Simply because Kenyans seem to st have started believing that they are trying to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So I would want to look at this from that angle and uh, hope that it is genuine that uh, those areas don't have that kind of network. And again, other than that, I, I think we all, it's also important for them to communicate what other plans, contingency plans do they have mm -hmm. to ensure that, again, it does not take so long that it is not justifiable. Right. Because even with those challenges, there is the, the time span that ordinarily then that should take, if, even in such uh, situations. I remember there is, I heard him say that they've even put satellites to ensure that some of the, they, they can boost some of the networks uh, from these areas. Mm -hmm. Then we would also want to know the mitigation, the mitigation the plans that they've uh, put in place to ensure that, again, it does not take, you know, unreasonable time right. before Kenyans get to know. And the other thing is, like, for instance, I assume that KTN has got uh, uh, representatives in all the 290 constituencies. Uh -huh. And uh, somehow those representatives will let you know, and probably in uh, the shortest time possible, what each candidate got. <laughs> so the region. IBC, if then KTN, for instance, are in a position to get these results, and credibly so, within a certain time, then the, there will be no excuse for IBC to tell us that we have to wait for another 48 hours mm -hmm. when other key players already have, have the results. The Which brings us to the next issue, Kavemba. Yes. Um, when it comes to the announcement of presidential results, and this is uh, that uh, the results will not have the periodic updates um, as uh, they're normally seen in other elections, and that the final results will just be announced by IBC. And of course, even the media has been asked not to announce any results before the IBC gives um, the official results for that particular area. Let me maybe come to you, Owila. In terms of that decision, um, you know, in terms of the periodic presidential results, what do you make of that? Well, I think uh, the IBC chair retracted that and uh -huh. say that because Kenyans want to be informed periodically, that IBC will go ahead and do that. Uh -huh. uh, so we, we're going to have that, you know. But even, even if they were not going to do that, I think it's, uh, the, the process is uh, outside there. Everyone understands, you know, that once a returning officer or a presiding officer has declared the results, they are signed by the agents. The first thing they need to do is to scan, send, and then key in, you know. And IBC came out and said that uh, the scanned document will take precedence. So uh, it, it doesn't really matter whether somebody stands and informs you that this is what is going on, mm -hmm. because you can easily tabulate that from wherever you are. But I think for purposes of clarity and to allay any fears, you know, and uh, emergence of fake news and stories here and there, uh, the chair actually say that because Kenyans have demanded, and this election is about Kenyans, that they will be doing it periodically. All right. Yes. Um, Mokua, even after the mysterious death of uh, Chris Sando, on the same day when IBC was meant to test the transmission of election results, they did do that dry run about two days later, um, just trying to cement uh, you know, to the public how prepared they are for this election. In your view, how prepared is IBC? Well, I think they're sufficiently prepared. Maybe just to speak about the issue of the periodic updates, uh -huh. you recall in the past what would happen uh, every two hours, you would have uh, tired-looking commissioners coming to give updates. Right. You know, with uh, just a piece of papers. But because this time it's going to be real time, every news agency in Kenya will have access to the information real time. So the, the chairman doesn't need to come on a regular basis to, be, to give, be giving you information which you already have as a, as a news agency or even a Kenyan, wherever you are seated. Because the same information the commissioner or rather the chairman would want to give you, every Kenyan would have access to it. Right. So it actually doesn't uh, make any sense. And I think there was a lapse in communication when he said that. Probably they needed just to invest more in communications. Because when he made the statement initially, it was uh, misinterpreted to mean that I will be in the dark for maybe two or three days. Right. And then he crawls from the woodwork and he declares the winner. But since everybody is going to be able to access it uh, real time, I don't think there's a challenge. But coming back to IBC, I think this time around they are very solid in their preparations. And uh, the game changer has been, uh, number one, that's a criminal responsibility. Mm -hmm. Even the ballot papers that we are talking about, whether or not they're going to be valid, if there is evidence that anybody within IBC has committed an error of a commission or omission, then it takes responsibility as a person. You know, in the past, you would do a mistake and hide behind IBC. But this time around, you'll be dancing to the music all alone. 
And then, of course, about the technology. Last time, again, there, there was a big crisis. Because instead of the commissioners focusing on the core issue of delivering a credible election, they were doing business within the commission. So they would sit in a boardroom and allocate themselves tenders. In the process, they allocated themselves tenders, and they got technologies which were not uh, compatible. Mm -hmm. But this time around, they, they, they seem to be very solid. They, 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 they got now technologies which are compatible. And they tested it, and observers, and uh, the media, and and other people, interested parties, who are very happy with what they saw. And one hopes that what we saw at Bombers of Kenya is actually reality. Because you know, the ICT guys can be very clever and they can make you believe that there's something is happening. Uh -huh. Because there was no independent way of verifying that you're actually getting the numbers coming from those, uh, from those outlying stations. So it would, uh, but, but we give them the benefits of doubt because we don't have information to the contrary that the system is going to work. And I think this time around, the commission is sufficiently prepared Apart from uh, there is uh, some sort of a controversy or some you know mystery around uh, Mr. James Muhati, who is the the ICT director. You recall he was uh, sent on a compulsory leave by an entire plenary. You know all the commissioners sat down and said because he's refusing to cooperate with uh, his uh, fellow directors and commissioners, let's suspend him for a couple of days. And a number of commissioners were very surprised that uh, he had been reinstated again without the full plenary having a session. And uh, inside information reveals that uh, those commissioners that are a bit uncomfortable and they are beginning to ask pertinent questions that if a full plenary suspended this fella, how come a few commissioners sat and reinstated him? So they are beginning to say that probably there are external forces, there are some cartels. And maybe this is the information, in as much as we've got a few days to the election, a few hours, for the commission actually to tell us that everything is solid. Uh -huh. Nobody's going to play around with this. But be that as it may, the fact that the presidential results are going to be announced at the constituency level gives everybody the right kind of confidence. The confidence levels are very high. So that even if there's a delay in a results transmission, that will not be a challenge. And you know, some of the things that IBC speaks about here, you really wonder whether the, the, somebody goes through the media statements before they go out. I mean, if there's no, say, network at point A, as soon as you got the results, you can drive, you can drive 100 <coughs> kilometers, which and you know they've got all the top of the range vehicles, which will take them probably one hour right. to go to a place where there's a network where they can do the transmission. Uh -huh. So some of the things they say really, you, you form an impression that uh, maybe they're preparing us for some mischief. But again, it's important for them to be proactive with this communication. So that at the end of the day, if there's a delay of say two or three hours, then uh, you know Kenyans are forewarned that there might be a delay. But the logic behind that is what uh, I find to be quite absurd. All right, and of course when it comes to transmission of votes, those votes have to be in the ballot to begin with. Let's focus on that final push that we saw um, both uh, NASA and uh, Jubilee hold yesterday. And of course it was very colorful in both uh, Raleigh here in Nairobi and uh, in Kuruba. The clarion call for their supporters was come out in large numbers, vote in large numbers, so we have a first round win. Um, Kavemba, in terms of voter turnout, do you think, first of all, that our political parties tailored their campaigns thinking about voter turnout? Because towards the end of this campaign period, there's been thoughts, I mean, talk of fears, talk of mass exodus of Kenyans from one place to another because of, you know, the rising tension in this election. Do you think that is likely to be an issue affecting voter turnout? Uh, yes, I, in urban areas, clearly it is going to be, going by the number of people who've been traveling, it has been looking like it is the Christmas holidays. Uh -huh. Actually, it got to a point that uh, the, 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 the people took upon themselves, some of the supporters of the people, the parties that are worried that their supporters are going home, uh -huh. to start checking at the voters' card to ensure that uh, no one is registered you're in this. you actually registered where you're going. Yes, that already tells you that they have uh, genuine concerns about that. And uh, voter turnout is actually, uh, the truth of the matter is that this election is really going to be determined by voter turnout. Uh -huh. The voting patterns in this country are well known. And uh, the, the, the undecided voters or the swing vote is a very small percentage. And that simply means that whoever is going to manage to mobilize their people to come out in big numbers is most likely going to be the winner. Uh -huh. And it is not just this election. If you have been keen on the 2013 election results, again, voter turnout really played a role. Right. Because it was very clear that the Jubilee areas were at a very high voter turnout uh -huh. as compared to, I actually don't think any of the Jubilee strongholds had less than 80% voter turnout. Uh -huh. But some of the other, the, the cold areas, especially in the coast, I think the lowest was around 66%. Uh -huh. That was quite 
quite low. So I, I, on, on that particular call, they are very <coughs> on point, very much on point, right. that uh, we have to get as many of our people out on this day if we are to win. Mm -hmm. That, I think, is uh, a very relevant message, and that is why it was the last message, because as we go to the vote, that ensure that everybody who has a vote gets out to, to vote. To vote. Um, so on that one, I agree with them, mm -hmm. that whoever is not going to mobilize their people effectively is going to pay dearly for it. Right. Uh, Willa, let's talk about the factors then that could affect um, voter turnout. I mean, it's not just in urban areas where we've seen these issues. Um, you, you know, we're living in an era where, you know, amid claims by the opposition that uh, several, you know, KDF, you know, installations have been placed in NASA strongholds to suppress voters. It is something that seemingly allays some sort of tension. So in the manner in which the campaigns were tailored, what factors do you think could affect voter turnout? I think the biggest uh, factor that would have affected voter turnout was, you know, the presence of, you know, uh, tight security in, 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 in certain areas. Uh, yesterday, I think I saw some big trucks, you know, uh, driving into my home county of Migori. And, uh, you know, apparently three or five years ago, guys would be worried that, you know what, I don't need to come out and vote because there's likely to be chaos and violence. But I think the voter is uh, consciously aware of the fact that they have a civic responsibility mm -hmm. to go and vote. So I don't think that is a threat. Whether there is military, whether there is security or whatever, I think the, the public is a lot more conscious right now. And they know that this is Kenyan security that is meant to ensure that we vote in a very peaceful way. Right. So to, to that extent, I think uh, no one can scare voters away. Mm -hmm. You know, no one. Whether you're in government or in opposition, you cannot. But I think the other thing that affected voter turnout in, 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 in the last general election, which uh, NASA has strongly addressed, uh, you know, voter apathy comes with the notion or the perception that we are on the losing end, uh -huh. you know. So if I go out and, and vote, chances are I'll be wasting my time uh, to no avail, you know. And I think uh, if, if you look at what NASA has done continuously, they've strived, you know, to, to debunk and disabuse that, that this time around we're even a lot more stronger, you know. And this perception, of course, was, was anchored on the fact that, you know, uh, uh, you know, from a Pentagon of seven, I think the, the core principle then was reduced to, you know, I think uh, zero, you know, plus a new entry in Kalonzo Musioka. So the fact that the rest had gone created the illusion that, you know, if in 2007 you didn't make it and you had numbers, in 2013, guys just uh, pulled out. And the same thing in Western. You realize that most of the folks in Western Kenya uh -huh. just thought that, you know, uh, I mean, uh, our candidate is not going anywhere. So there is even no need to make an effort. And, you know, the coming together of the NASA principle, I think, is one thing that will pull voters out of this apathy that we, 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 we talk about uh -huh. to come and vote. And uh, you look at the rallying call that NASA has been having throughout, it has always been, uh, you know, we've had the worst four years, you know, and if we were to make things better, you need to come out. So there's a reason why they've done that, because they've allayed all the fears that created vote uh, apathy. And then on the Jubilee side, again, you realize that, you know, the key factors that, 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 that uh, would, would make Jubilee not to get uh, the turnout that they want yeah. is the fact that uh, people are complacent, you know. And I think the jubilee side of the <coughs> political divide has gone out and told people that this is what we've done. We've done a lot more, and there is still a lot more that we need to do. Right. And if you want to enjoy the things that we've done and the things that you're going to do, you must come out and vote. Uh -huh. So the rallying call has been twofold. That there's one that is telling uh, Kenyans that, you know what, you are worse off. And for you to stop this, you must turn out and vote. Right. Yeah. Let's explore that angle, you know, of uh, voter apathy because uh, the some who feel they're on the losing end. In the recent um, two months or so, we've seen opinion polls that have put both Raila and Uhuru at a very close margin. Uh, you know, so it, basically it is an election that is too close to call and that may possibly allay fears of those who feel maybe, you know, we're on the losing side. But this month, in terms of bringing the opinion polls into this, um, have they maybe been hitting the right mark in your view? Yeah, you know, when you have opinion polls that are giving different perspectives on who is going to win, then it means that as a democracy we're beginning to mature. Uh -huh. Because, you know, political scientists and scholars say a good election is the one which is unpredictable. You, you, you recall Rwanda had an election yesterday, and everybody would have predicted the winner. Uh -huh. And, you know, media says Paul Kagame won by 19% of the vote. There was no doubt. 
But in Kenya right now, nobody actually knows who is going to win uh, this election. Mm -hmm. And now when you talk about the voter turnout, the, the, the person who is going to be a beneficiary of voter turnout is going to be Raila Odinga. Because when you look at the Jubilico voting blocks, the Kikuyu community and the Kalenjin community, the voter turnout for some reason is normally very high. Mm -hmm. It's actually hit the saturation point. So therefore meaning that for President Kenyatta, it cannot get better. It's already at the apex. Now the principal beneficiary would be Rai Lodinga. And you recall that in their closing remarks, their closing arguments, they were very specific on these, especially on their core bases in, uh, around the Luenyanza when they were in Kisumu, when they went to Western Kenya, and also in the coast. Uh -huh. Because a number, of their, a number of their supporters were beginning to, to resign to the fact that in fact Jubilee is going to win. And you recall President Kenyatta and his deputy have been saying that uh, during the last elections, we were able to beat Mr. Raila Odinga hands down, and we were not incumbents, and we, were, we had the ICC issue facing us. Now, this time around, we don't have ICC on our back, and we're in government. They're not going to be able to beat us. That's why, if you recall the message delivered yesterday by Governor Halia Sanjo, mm -hmm. he said that they've already won. And as a registered voter, go to the polling station, cast your ballots, the rest of the details leave it to us. Because you know there's been this perception that a Jubilee is going to rig the elections. Right. You know, w w when you keep on repeating that, even the most fanatical supporters of NASA will say, okay, my ballot doesn't count. Why should I go to the polling station? Mm -hmm. But the last couple of days, Mr. Raila Odinga and his, and his uh, principals have been saying, Wake up early in the morning, we requested you to go and register as a voter. Please go and cast your ballot. The rest, we've taken care of this. And you see Mr. James Oringo and company, all the time they've been running to the high court. Uh -huh. They wanted to offer clarity, especially on the loopholes on where people normally steal election. And you know, uh, James Oringo has been uh, in the block for a long time. <coughs> And the fact that we have the results being announced at the or rather presidential results at the constituency level, uh -huh. that gives uh, NASA people confidence. So if you have a voter turnout increasing by a very small margin, 